former police officer, Connie Hackney, who's there. I didn't, I didn't introduce him with the group, but he has been really uh, leading different efforts. We had ambassadors on for six months. Um, he helped train them. They just were in the neighborhood to report things. They reported over 400 um, complaints. Uh, they also called social service groups on a regular basis. Uh, we've been putting cameras uh, up in different locations. In fact, at the Boys and Girls Club, there's three cameras there that feed into the safety <coughs> building. There's also three, two, three? We, we've two. narrowed it to two, the rotating yeah. one at the Martinique at Chelsea and uh, Pacific. We were able to get the one that rotate to cover 75% of it, so we didn't have to put the other, other fixed one on. We're going to put that somewhere else. So if you know where the Martinique Motel is, you know it's probably a good place for a camera. That also feeds directly into public safety building. We're analyzing that versus having um, cameras that we, that are not, these are expensive cameras. I mean, they, it's about $10,000 a location to put those cameras up um, to feed into the public safety building. Um, we could also buy cheaper cameras and put them up throughout the neighborhood. They wouldn't feed into the public safety building, but we could get access to them, uh, or the owners could have access. And then we've also been doing a ring doorbell uh, project. So Ahmed and um, Connie and Mo, a little bit, has been going going out and installing ring doorbell cameras. And that is really, I think we've put in about 10 or 15 at this point. That's really getting a lot of uh, interest from the residents and it's something we can directly give to the residents. So uh, that's been a, a good project. But I wanted, I asked uh, Rise Up AC to come uh, to speak today. Mark's gonna, Mark's gonna come <coughs> So we report a lot to the uh, to social services, and Connie had introduced us to Lou Gasparino, and Lou Gasparino was here, and Lou would come out and meet the people where they were, and uh, find out what they needed, and really be effective in trying to get them services or get them home to where they came from, and we saw more more accomplished with the work we did with Lou than the $40,000 we spent with Atlantic Care and JFS um, in a more formal contract. So we allocated $50,000 of our 2021 money to have Atlantic Care work with social workers, bring them out to their locations. They did their best. You know, they worked with them to try and get them into programs. The problem is if someone doesn't want to get into a program, you can't force them. And um, so, you know, they've had they had some successes, but after we after forty thousand, they're like, okay, let's talk and re reevaluate this. Um, so we're talking to Rise Up about continuing to work with them. Mark. Okay, thanks. Uh, my name is Mark Meganelli, and I've come here to represent Rise Up AC, uh, Lou Gasparini, Bill Wentz. Uh, <coughs> we have uh, a lot of experience. Uh, Bill is former law enforcement, was a uh, community outreach worker uh, to the streets. Lou Gasparini worked with the Atlantic City Rest Commission once upon a time and then uh, and worked with Bill Wentz at that time and I was working for Atlantic Care myself. Uh, I retired last year. Uh, Bill retired. I was working for the county but then uh, in the last uh, few months he's decided to come back to uh, kind of to his roots. Uh, and the three of us are working together. Uh, I've worked in Atlantic City for over 30 years with the homeless population. Uh, I, I worked for the Atlantic City Rescue Commission at one time and then went to work for Atlantic Air. I'm a certified alcohol and drug counselor and social worker and uh, uh, Lou is a uh, certified peer counselor. Uh, so we have a lot of experience but in different different areas, but collectively we come together. Uh, Connie Hackney uh, brought us together uh, with DEVCO uh, this past summer. And so Lou and I began targeting areas in, in Chelsea section uh, and began doing uh, outreach there. Prior to that, he was, Lou has just been all over the city. Uh, and. Uh, Great thing is he's willing to work on weekends. He goes out in the evenings. Uh, so we have like a seven day coverage uh, between the three of us. Uh, Lou used to go out a, a lot alone. That's not really a good situation. 
So now that there's the three of us working together, uh, it's a it's a much safer um, safer situation. Um, we are partnering, and we we've uh, been partnering with uh, Hope One, uh, with Lanning County, uh, with uh, Atlantic Care, of course, uh, the Atlantic Cedar Rescue Mission, Jewish Family Services, uh, Volunteers of America, all the local social service agencies because we can't do this job alone. Uh, it's a very difficult job. Uh, there's a lot of chronic homelessness out there, uh, a lot of resistance to uh, even receiving help. Uh, we've had a lot of victories, a lot of good results uh, through uh, offering treatment and working with Hope One and, and Atlantic Care. Uh, we can get people into treatment almost immediately. Um, we don't have a necessarily access to a 24-hour detoxification uh, unit, but that's something that we're working on with Atlantic Care uh, and uh, John Brooks uh, as, as a, an example. So we... Um, oh, okay. they wanted to say now. Excuse me? John Brooks. Yes. Some yes. Yeah. Um, I... I work with uh, closely with uh, Atlantic Care. Uh, the Health Plex is where I was based, uh, and we did drug and alcohol treatment there and mental health treatment. Uh, a good relationship with Sandy, Sandy Festa, you know that name. Uh, she gets things done. Uh, we're, we're just we just have good good relationships. We're building relationships, and that's what we've taken to the street to build relationships people that have been formally resistant to any help at all. And uh, in doing that, they get we gain their trust, they they trust us, and we can transition them into, into appropriate uh, help and services. Um, it's, it, it is a challenge. Um, I worked for the Atlantic City Rescue Mission at a time when we were a great partner in the community. And Sadly, it's not at that place right now. Uh, we've met with, uh, <coughs> met with uh, Bill Warner there to try to facilitate more of a relationship and get, get more services from them that are needed to get people into uh, shelter, uh, just to get them off the street long enough to get the appropriate help. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a, Lou is, was formerly homeless himself for eight years. Um, uh, Lou has a tremendous story, and because of that, it just, it, and with Bill Wentz's experience, my experiences, it just really helps us to understand what's going on out there. Um, it's kind of like, you know, it's the dirty work behind all the, the great work that's going on, but it, it really has to be done. And, uh, Summers are worse than the winters. The winter weather tends to thin people out, but uh, we we will continue to work, and uh, we look forward to partnering and expanding our partners uh, in Atlantic City, and uh, and just you know uh, finding more resources for people that are very difficult to work with and uh, plug into these resources. Thank you very much. So the most significant thing I've heard from Mark, uh, Bill, and Lou are that there are places for people to go to be placed in. Um, so we, it's just getting them to want to go in, right? Um, it's not a, what we do need is a 24-hour detox, right? So I'm learning, but um, outside but of the city, there is hope, and I think there's a lot of. Uh, Sure. Yeah, put it all short. Uh, um, but there are a lot of resources now going into this. Um, I want to, let's see. I want to show a quick video while the food's getting set up, and then uh, we're going to open it up.